This is Kai from New Electronic Frontier and today I'm going to unbox and show you the 91111 envelope generator from Behringer. So it comes in this lead little box, you've probably seen it before in the other videos and if we just take a look, oh come on, what's inside? I'm going to find power cable, as usual module, rack screws, that's fine. Quick start guide, and so let's check out how the module looks like. Well packed, so nothing can happen to it. And so here you go. My see it like this metal brushed front plate with the silver edges and uh, these old style milk knobs I really and oh i like i like how they turn so it feels really good sturdy you see it's a it's a massive front plate it's a really well built metal spaces yeah. really really nice so i i'm actually still stunned by the, by the build quality um, the Behringer modules have because for the price point it's, it's really incredible. I mean <clears throat> this one I got for 58 euros I guess it was so um, yeah that's that's an amazing thing for an ADSR envelope. Um, and as you can see you have uh, the typical ones uh, attack, decay, release and sustain and you can uh, regulate the first one, so the AD and R, uh, AD and S, no, AD and R, sorry, uh, like from two milliseconds until 10 seconds, which is pretty nice that you can dial in the seconds here, and the sustain is regulated via like a voltage from zero to um, 10. Okay, so one thing is here, and I, I show you, um, before we actually um, see what it does in the rack, um, one thing you have to be careful of is this thing. It says S trig in. So on a usual Eurorack modular, you would expect that this trigger in just takes a CV gate signal that you you know get from like every Eurorack sequencer or keyboards or whatever you have, right? So you get like CV gate controlled signals. That means if there's no impulse, signal zero. If there comes an impulse, uh, usually it goes up to five volts or uh, higher. So this is a trigger then. And as long as the trigger is there, um, the envelope or whatever happens is triggered. It, 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 the trigger stays and when it goes away, then the trigger is closed again. This is the S trigger, but the S trigger works completely different because the S trigger was actually built in by Bok Moog in the first Moog systems, and it's um, it's a bit different. So actually, when there's no trigger, you have like a voltage in here. So you have like it's like the opposite, right? So if if there's no signal, you have a voltage, and if you press the trigger, the voltage goes down to, to a zero level. So meaning. With a normal CV gate, you cannot do anything with this module. Um, it behaves totally weird. <laughs> um, I've had this um, uh, first version of this video. Um, I, I did not really, you know, I ignored it basically, and it didn't work out. So I got into some research about this thing. So um, I will show you in the next section of how you can build an easy um, CV gate to S trigger converter that works beautifully with this envelope. And the cost of this is like five minutes soldering and I guess the components are like 40 euro cents or something. So it's basically nothing, but you need to know this and you need to do this before you can actually use this in a normal Eurorack environment. So let's uh, go on to this part and um, see how this with the soldering works and afterwards we put this in the rack and see what it else can do. Now to the soldering, I um, Time lapse this a little bit so I don't bore you out with the soldering together. So the pieces for this are quite easy and uh, a big thanks and kudos to Markus Fuller. Um, so you find a link to his original video 
where he shows how to actually build uh, one of those cables. Um, we are using a TRS jack cable on both ends. In Marcus' video he uses the original uh, MOOC a blade connector. Um, so this is why I decided to just show you how the soldering is. So it's really easy and as you can see in the process I am really not a total pro in soldering. I mean I, I guess I have basic knowledge but uh, I guess everybody was a it was a little bit of you know practice in soldering uh, basic knowledge really can do this so the parts you do this uh, you need for this is a 2n3904 npn transistor uh, it's a pretty standard piece it comes at I don't know 20 euro cents or something like that and you need a 10k resistor which is even I guess cheaper than that so parts uh, you need from your electronics guy is I, I don't know the 30 40 euro cents plus one um, um, TRS jack standard cable um, I like to use these uh, higher quality ones which are shielded so um, quite easy so what I do here is just checking for sure that uh, the right um, the right wire is uh, with a polarity to tip and and uh, uh, this is right, so I don't confuse this. So let's check this with a multimeter. Then just soldering a little bit of um, uh, of the um, soldering tin on the ends of the cables, so it's easier and they stick better. Um, so here I shorten the uh, resistor a little bit. And what's what's really 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 cool, and I, I tell you, I mean this pieces come for just a couple of euros is this so-called third hand where you just can put in together um, you know the, the pieces and you can solder them easily so if you don't have one of those really you you should buy one even if you solder once a year it's it's worth it so you see the resistor comes to the tip so the red cable um, as in doubt and this goes then the resistor goes and goes to the base of the uh, transistor so pretty easily put so this way okay you can see here and um, then it's just that um, the ground wire needs to be connected to the emitter so here comes the ground wire and what I found out is, oh no, I first uh, connect, I first connect the, the collector of the transmitted uh, uh, transistor to the uh, to the tip of the other end, and then as you can see here, you could squeeze it, <laughs> but I didn't want to do that because um, it goes ugly and you cannot really wrap it up, um, and I will shrink wrap or wrap it with you know um, tape to make sure um, that it's. Um, that it's sealed so um, I uh, look up some uh, extra cable here and um, we'll just put in some short pieces of wire um, in between so to make it a little bit nicer in means of um, you know wrappability let's let's call it like this so I can say here just a little bit solder to it and then here we go so making the ground cable a little bit longer then connecting it to the emitter um, lag of the transistor and finally soldering on the other end here yeah. and if you've done that that's all about it so your cable is ready So let's see how this guy now works inside uh, the rack. 
So for the setup, I have this cable I just soldered. Um, now here, I <laughs> didn't wrap it yet, but it works. So it goes into the S trigger. Um, I have a KG um, sequencer from Analog Solutions. This is clocked by an LFO because I just clocked like one, <laughs> one, uh, one note um, and really slowly. So we can see the impulses coming um, on the scope. Um, the art goes into a Dopfer uh, VCA um, in the CV control, obviously. Um, the um, CV out from the EKG goes into a quantizer. I mean, it's just cabled this way. Uh, for here, it goes into a 110 Dopfer standard VCO uh, on a um, square wave. Uh, so we can easily see uh, the impulses. The audio signal then is split. One goes into my uh, sound card directly, the other one goes into the iPad with the scope software on it. So, um, that being said, if you take a look at the scope, um, you will see that there are pulses coming in. Um, and uh, this is because the module starts as an ADSR, right? So it's an attack, um, attack decay, um, it's a sustain and a release one. Um, and um, let's see how this works. I mean, it, it, the dials are from two milliseconds until 10 seconds. This is where you still get a small impulse. So it doesn't kill the whole generator, but there's a two milliseconds impulse coming through. And now if we just turn in the attack, dial in the attack, we can see short sure impulses coming in. Okay, so now, okay. So I can see nicely how attack and EK work, right? So it's just like curve up, curve down here and, and until zero. So let's dial in a little bit of sustain here. Oh, actually, sorry, it's a release. That's a bit mind-boggling here, because T3 is actually the release time, and it's it's um, it's upper. So you can see now we have sustain. It stays here. See, goes up, goes down, stays with some sustain, and if we now dial in the release smoothly goes down. So it's an ADSR, but it's an ADRS actually. So for the dials, it's a bit, the, 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 the button two are like twisted around. Uh, if you have another ADSR module, um, it's likely that uh, they have the button, uh, the dials um, the other way around. So that's a bit mind boggling in the beginning, but uh, you get used to it, trust me. So. And starting with just playing around with the knobs, you can now model some nice sounds, right? You can see they're really like this 10 seconds is really like climbing up. Oh, and then my, my pulse is too short. <laughs> but it can really do the job. So, okay, now let's make the pulse a little bit shorter. So see what else we get. We make like more. See, this is one thing I like at the module is that the uh, dials just really respond to fine settings here, so you can really model around with it in a nice way.
Okay. You can see, I mean, you get the idea. You do, I guess you know what an SD ADS are, what you can do. So, okay. So that's about it um, for the Dub for 911. Um, I definitely gonna keep the model. Um, I, I like how the dials work. Um, the knobs, they really turn sturdy. I like the looks of it. Um, also, it comes with an amazing price point. I guess I got the unit for 58 euros, um, and it's an incredible build quality for that. Um, it does the job really well. Um, I like the lower um, dialing here, and I like also that you can like put in like 10 seconds and stuff like that. So it's pretty flexible for what it does. Um, only downturn is, and you have to really think about this, is the S trigger in. So this is not a CD gate trigger, okay? So if you have a, a normal, um, if you have a normal sequencer going on um, in, a, in your Euro rack, um, the gate signal coming out of this won't trigger this guy. This is simply because the S trigger format is different. Um, I explained in the soldering part of this video. And this means you need to put on a converter cable like this. Like, I mean, the thing is, it's like five minutes work and the components are like, I don't know exactly, but it's like 40 euro cents or something like that. So um, it doesn't really matter that much. So you just buy the stuff, you both make like two, two, three cables and then you're done. Uh, um, if you don't have a lot of these modules. Um, actually, I don't know why Behringer put in the S-Trigger. I mean, kudos for um, rebuilding this Mook star stuff. If you have a, a um, model 55 um, or uh, 15 or 35, you, <laughs> you can use these modules with S triggers like directly in these environments. This is pretty nice, but I mean, it comes in a Eurorack format um, and I had wished from Battery actually to put in something modern, like a dip switch where you can switch between S trigger and CD gate, um, which would have been possible actually, um, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this is the only downturn, but if you don't care about this, it's it's absolutely a, a, a go-to module because, as I said, it does the job really well. It looks beautiful um, and its build quality, this will last until the end of days, I guess. Um, yeah, um, also, if you don't want to solder, uh, you can keep a look on it. There's an extra module from Behringer. Um, I'm not sure about the name, I guess, Control or something like that. Um, which is actually for converting like trigger signals from one into another, et cetera, et cetera. But for sure, it's an, it's an extra module. It takes extra space and is, uh, yeah, you know, comes at an extra cost. But you can take a look at this. This will, um, I guess, also solve the S trigger problem here in your Eurorack environment. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, that was Kai from New Electronic Frontier. If you liked this, like the video, leave a comment. Um, subscribe to the channel and uh, come back for more videos.